Hello, my friends. I um, hope you're doing great. Today, uh, we are going to tackle a problem. Um, do you remember my power hammer dice that I brutally modified uh, a while back? <laughs> uh, they are pretty soft. Yeah. I'm not sure if it shows up on camera here, but there are a lot of small depressions and uh, dings and stuff. And uh, we need to take care of that. To be honest, this is not a huge surprise. <laughs> uh, I used a saw to cut into hardened material. Shouldn't be possible. Um, although power hammer dies are not typically very hard, um, using a saw to cut something off, <laughs> it should not be possible. Also, uh, I believe this is 1045 steel. I came up with that uh, after some research and spark testing. And 1045 steel is the surface hardening steel and that means that only about 10 or 15 millimeters gets hard on the surface. The core inside is still soft. And by removing those uh, 10 or 15 millimeters like I did here, <laughs> that's of course not uh, very good. You expose the soft core here. So, the project for today is to reheat treat them and make them usable again. Let's go. Here you probably can see the, the damage a bit more clearly. I will now clean them off, degrease them and uh, lightly sand off all the depressions before we go into the new kiln. to the grinder. Grinding done. It's a bit rough, but that's fine for now. I think we are ready for the heat treat. But I want to point out one thing. With just a little bit of bad luck, this all can go horribly wrong. Look at all the sharp corners here. Especially the inside ones like this. They are stress risers and they can actually cause a crack during the quench. The quenching puts a tremendous amount of stress on the material, so let's hope for the best. And here I've found a pair of tongs that I think will work. Quite heavy. Uh, skip, yeah, yep. Ramp up, no. I want it to heat up as fast as possible, so we skip the ramp and we 
are going to use 850. That's the hardening temperature for uh, C45 or 1045 steel. And uh, wait a minute. Okay, hold. So I want uh, the kiln to reach 850 as fast as possible, and I want it to hold at that temperature. Start. Whew, I'm excited. I'm a bit nervous. I hope it goes well. I will need a lot of water to quench this. After about one hour and 20 minutes, the uh, kiln is up in temperature, uh, it's 50, and the pieces are on par with that. Good. And now it's time for them to soak for about half an hour. Then it's time for the quench. There goes nothing. <clears throat> Funny sounds. I think I will have to change some of the water. It's becoming quite warm. <coughs> I will put it here in the vermiculite until we have the right temperature in the, in the kiln again for tempering. Okay, let's do number two. Here we go. Okay, I think we're done there. Whew. Now we will need to let this cool down a bit. I want to do the tempering at about 3.30, I think. I'll program that. Okay, this is taking a while, so I'm placing them here for a while. Over the years, I have learned that you should never let a hardened piece sit and uh, cool down completely uh, after the quenching to uh, 50 or 60 degrees is okay. Then you need to go to tempering. I've actually heard stories about people who left uh, hardened pieces overnight and came back the next morning and found them cracked. That's a hard lesson learned. Uh, so remember, after quenching, temper immediately. So I did a bit of a mess here. No worries, it's just water. 1045 steel is a water hardening steel. Uh, can be quenched in oil also, but the hardness will uh, suffer a bit from it. And the, the, the choice between water and oil, it's all dependent on the alloy. So the type of steel you use uh, dictates the quenching medium. I get a lot of questions about that. Water, oil, water, oil, what's the difference? But in reality, it's the steel that decides. It's going down here as you see, but I changed my mind here. I will start at 300, I think, and see how that turns out. You can never go back, you know.
Yep. It's now uh, the next day, um, as you saw, I used uh, the wire wheel to clean off the scale and uh, the grinder to, to get a smooth, nice surface again. Last night we left the dies for tempering, uh, 300 degrees, and I left them there for about two hours. Tempering is an absolutely essential step in the heat treating process. Uh, first you harden something by quenching and it becomes really, really, really hard and brittle, almost like glass. Um, and to make the material usable for different applications, you use the tempering to control how tough or how hard you need the material to be. And for all modern alloys, you should be able to find a chart where you can see the relationship between the tempering temperature and the hardness. And for 1045 steel or C45 steel as we have here, uh, tempered to 300 degrees Celsius, that should give us a hardness of about or between 45 or 50 HRC, Rockwell hardness. Yeah, to help me verify the hardness here, I have got myself a set of hardness testing files from Tsubotsan, made in Japan. And here we have six files in uh, hardness ranging from 40 to 65. And how you use this, you just uh, start with the hardest one, see if that marks the surface. If it does, continue down, and use the next one till you reach a file that no longer touches the surface then you know that you are in a hardness range. I hope that makes some sense. Um, we probably could start with 55 here since I'm pretty sure we are above 55. And that definitely makes a mark. We go down to um, 50. Mm. Not that prominent, but still leaves a mark on the surface for sure. Let's go down to 45. This shouldn't touch the surface much. No, it doesn't. Hmm. That's pretty cool. So the 45 does not mark the surface, but the 50 does. Then we have a hardness between 45 and 50, and that is precisely what I want. Oh, let's see if I can get them back onto the hammer. This is a quite nifty little lock for the wedge. 
should hold the wedge in, in place. So it can't fall out. Roughly in place. Let's see how the alignment is. Perfect alignment. Great. Yeah, let's do a little test run. It's been a while since I forged any play buttons. It took me three tries to get the right amount of material. This one turned out pretty good. Um, some of you will certainly remember that I made these uh, for my uh, 100,000 subscriber celebration. Feels like it was yesterday. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> uh, I think the dice performed as expected. Uh, no issues so far, <laughs> only forged three play buttons. But uh, time will probably tell how well they will hold up. I hope they are good. Anyway, thanks for watching. And um, if you want to grab one of uh, these play button keychains, be sure to check out my, uh, my Patreon page where I have made them available. Thank you and see you next time.